One of the many gifts that Andor gives to us in its first few episodes was a glimpse of the vaunted Imperial Security Bureau headquarters in the heart of the Federal District. This awe-inspiring structure is made out of shards of glass, which like fingers reach out towards the sky and the galaxy beyond, getting itself entangled in the day-to-day -day activities of almost every citizen of the Empire. In a way, the ISB building reminds me of the Imperial Crest, which itself comes from the Bendu Galactic Roundel symbol. Originally, this was a symbol of unity and non-confrontation. Palpatine would pervert this peaceful symbol by removing two spokes from the wheel, similar to how Hitler took the swastika from ancient Eastern religions like Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. To me, the Imperial Crest represents a cog, a giant gear that works and toils and generates riches and power for one single individual, the Emperor. At the heart of the Imperial Security Bureau headquarters, we see a large white conference room arranged into a circle. It's here that various supervisors of different sectors of the galaxy give their reports to ISB Major Partagas. I believe that Major Partagas sits in a circle himself, reporting to an even higher level ISB officer who is in charge of the entire Outer Rim territories, perhaps, or some larger division of the galaxy. While Major Partagas has a military officer rank, the supervisors clearly do not. Which is a clue to the Imperial Security Bureau's more civilian past. Yes, this might surprise a lot of Star Wars fans, but the Imperial Security Bureau is not a military organization. This is surprising because throughout Star Wars history, we've seen ISB officers from Colonel Wolfgar Lauren to Agent Alexander Callus operate alongside the Imperial military, oftentimes in command of their assets, whether it's stormtroopers or an entire Star Destroyer. So what exactly is the Imperial Security Bureau? What is their relationship with the wider military? Unlike the Imperial military intelligence, which spawned out of the Republic's military intelligence, the ISB really has no precursor in the Republic era. Instead, it finds its roots in a populist political movement known as the Commission for the Protection of the Republic. The movement was founded by an Iradu native known as Bino Doubton during the Clone Wars. He was actually sponsored and patronized by an individual known as Wilhuff Tarkin, who was the former governor of Iradu. And of course, Tarkin was mentored by Chancellor Palpatine, who, when he was a senator, helped Wilhuff Tarkin get that position as governor of his own home planet. After a short but very productive career as governor of Iradu, Wilhelm Tarkin would refuse to seek re-election and take a commission with the newly created Republic Navy. While Wilhelm Tarkin was just a lowly captain during the war, he still had plenty of connections to the Republic government's elite. He also had plenty of funds which he could redirect to different movements, including Compor. Now, the commission to protect the Republic seemed like a pretty innocent uh, movement at first, especially if you consider the fact that the Republic were considered the good guys in this conflict. Its main function was to create events and rallies to shore up public support for the Clone Army, the Chancellor of the Republic, and even the Jedi. They ran partner organizations like the SA Group or Sub Adult Group, which was essentially a youth organization which organized children of very pro-Republic uh, families to, I don't know, like create pamphlets and, and, and posters and print them all around Coruscant. But perhaps more importantly, Compor was a powerful political lobby. It seemed to have endless amounts of funds and it directed those funds into supporting political campaigns of candidates that the organization deemed as loyal to the war effort. This meant supporting Chancellor Palpatine having more emergency powers to be able to carry out this war. This meant that they had to vote for legislation like the Republic Military Enhancement Bill, which approved funds for an additional 5 million clone troopers in the middle of the war. Senators who partook in stuff like the Delegation of 2000, which dared to write a letter condemning our benevolent great leader, Supreme Chancellor Xi Palpatine, would be blacklisted by these organizations. Man, all of this political talk has me excited for Mon Mothma's highly contentious dinner party in the next episode. Be ready for some deadly levels of passive aggressiveness. So Compor would turn into Comp Nor with the rise of the New Order. And this uh, lobbying group would essentially become a political organization that was embedded into the federal government. The closest example we have of something like this happening would be the Nazi Party's ascension in 1933, where it became completely intertwined with the German state. So yeah, you can almost think of Comp Nor as Palpatine's own personal political party that was also helping run the entire galaxy.
Commodore began to create state-sponsored propaganda through groups like the Coalition for Progress, which was a regressive and restrictive organization that monitored cultural progress in the galaxy. There was also the Coalition for Improvement, which essentially developed long-term strategies to make sure that very anti-imperial worlds would become more pro-imperial, especially those in the Outer Rim or in former separatist regions. But perhaps the most powerful or what would become the most powerful organization within Copnor would be the Imperial Security Bureau. Now, in its earliest days, the ISB represented a small secret police, not all that different from the Nazi Gestapo or the Chinese MSS. Its goal was to root out enemies of the New Order and maintain stability throughout the core imperial territories during the proclamation of the New Order. It was also in charge of helping oversee the dismantling of what remained of the separatist military and confederacy of invent systems political movements. It would also wipe any trace of their leader Count Dooku from historical records. But soon, their mission would expand at an extremely fast rate. What Palpatine eventually found out was that while the regular military infrastructure like Imperial Army and Navy were capable of larger scale operations against conventional foes, it was very much like a giant clumsy hammer and incapable of precisely extracting the more hidden enemies of the Empire, some of whom were even embedded within the Imperial military and government. The ISB was infinitely more flexible and precise. More importantly, because of its inclusion within Kopnor, the organization was completely loyal to Emperor Palpatine, and its chain of command, unlike the military hierarchy, ran directly to him without any buffers. And so, as more sparks of turmoil, dissent, and chaos began emerging across the galaxy, both among Imperial ranks and also amongst the civilian populace, the ISB would grow from just a handful of officers into one of the largest intelligence gathering agencies in the Empire. The ISB would also develop many different subgroups, including a direct action enforcement subgroup, an internal affairs subgroup, which watched over the imperial government and military structure for traitors. They had a surveillance and espionage unit. They even had a group that was assigned to the Imperial Military Department of Advanced Weapons Research to help guard the Death Star. That's where Director Orson Krennic gets those scary Death Troopers from. An entire ISB academy and office complex would also be built, and they would directly draw the best cadets from the regular Imperial Academy system. These individuals would be trained to become the Emperor's eyes and ears all across the galaxy. And soon, wherever there was a problem that couldn't be solved through regular military intervention, an ISB officer would appear and break through the gridlock bureaucracy, problematic military culture, or whatever thing that was preventing the problem from being solved. And so Imperial Security Bureau officers became extremely feared by the other branches of the government, including even the Imperial Military Intelligence, their rival agency. ISB officers were basically representatives of the Emperor, and not all that different from the political commissars used by the Soviet Union back in World War II to make sure that their soldiers and military forces don't become too distant from the Communist Party and its ideology. And so ISB officers had the ability to commandeer Imperial military units whenever they wanted, and they stood outside of the normal Imperial military hierarchy. And should their mission be um, important enough, they could even ask a higher ranking military officer to do things for them. Towards the end of the Galactic Empire's reign after the death of Emperor Palpatine, ISB officers were entrusted with carrying out the Emperor's contingency plan and his terrifying Operation Cinder which was essentially a scorched earth policy that aimed to destroy several imperial worlds, including loyal ones like Vardos. ISB agents were selected because of not only their abilities as intelligence officers, but by how ruthless they could be, and more importantly, how loyal they were to the Emperor himself. Individuals like Valen Hess and Moff Gideon were always willing to go to the extreme for the Empire, even if it meant killing their fellow Imperials wholesale. They're almost Sith-like in their tenacity and cruelty, making them both very dangerous and unpredictable. So don't underestimate individuals like Supervisor Deidre Miro or Blevin. Their clean white uniforms might be designed to give off a sense of purity, or perhaps the cleansing of traitors' filth and rebels from the Imperial territories. But these individuals were actually incredibly intelligent, dangerous, and have all the resources of the Empire at their disposal. And Supervisor Deidre Miro seems very interested in that Star Path unit that Andor dropped on Ferrix. I imagine that nothing will be able to stop her from figuring out more about the theft of that item, not even her fellow ISB officers. Luckily for her, there's a corporal security officer who's a bit down on his luck. He's recently lost his job, and he's also quite a capable investigator himself. More importantly, he's familiar with the case. 
So that is a little uh, background for the Imperial Security Bureau for you guys. I hope that kind of fills you in on the uh, kind of history of this organization. This is not some kind of normal intelligence gathering organization. It is a very political one that is very loyal to Emperor Palpatine. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below if you don't want to miss out on the rest of our awesome coverage. And as usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.